You may have any additional thoughts that you want to add on that. Uh, yeah. I just was curious, is Tom, is Tom back on our committee? Yes, bro. No? Yes. Okay. Yes, and he is, is he here? Yes, he is. Oh, he is. Okay, yeah, and he was, I just gave him a shout and um, I couldn't get through to him, so he may be unavailable to make it. Um, but he has he has been officially welcomed back into the into the fold, um, which will be nice to have him back. We have two Sam Lipmans here. You do? <laughs> I assume the one's probably your cell phone. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm. All, I took got off my cell phone. I got off. <laughs> all right. Well, it's okay. You need two of me. Just, switch, just switch <laughs> you, need two of me. you know, I was. I'm a genesis. I, I'm a Gemini, so I'm schizophrenic anyway. So. <laughs> I am being so am I. <laughs> All right. Well, if you, if you two up, you're probably pulling down twice as much data than you need to. Um, hey, Sam, why don't we start? Well, if you want, if the, the meeting got adjourned already started, or did somebody say, did, did we, we do this? not adjourned yet. No, Sam. Yeah, you have to be a little more patient with us. <laughs> no, I was. Okay. Just wanted to know. The first thing might be if you want to report on on our meeting, our call with uh, Matt. Yeah, sure. Well, let's get started. Let's officially kick it off. I forgot the parliamentary procedure for that, but um, I don't have any gavel with me. But um, sorry, this is Zoom. Um, Carrie, remind me. What's the official language for kicking off a meeting? Did you say Carrie? Say, oh, I don't boy. Know oh, what it is. So Carrie always seems to know. I think let's get started. Yeah, I don't think there's official language. For that. Oh, there's not. Okay. All right. But you may have to approve the minutes. So. We'll call the meeting to order. Yeah, That's it. And stuff. I'll help you with that. Yeah. That's it, Richard. Call the meeting to order. Perfect. All right. With that, um, uh, we had the official meeting, the minutes from last time. I don't think we do. Um, and maybe, maybe we do, but. Uh, I have, a, I have a look. Anybody in public uh, on us on this call? No, I don't think so. Okay, so we can we can move on from that phase. Um, Perry, are there minutes that you want to show? You want to send us along? Oh, uh, let me see here. Do, 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 do. I think the minutes actually you did because the last um, our last call was just before the um, the board meeting, if I remember correctly. And there actually were minutes. Yeah. The um, you can go to that so, at the next I, meeting. I, I, we can, yeah. Since we don't have them, we can do it at the next meeting. July. Was that, that July was, 16th? That was July 16th, correct? Yeah. Can you see that? Yes, oh, we yeah. can. Perfect. Thanks, Brian. Good job. Good job, Perry. Yep. Um, so take a look at this. I think it's dun, dun. Yeah. I uh, motion to approve the minutes. Motion. Say uh, Sam. Is there a second? Second. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll Sam, second we'll, it. Thank you, Perry. Good Perry. All so right. moved. Minutes accepted. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Perry. Um, yeah, so for this one, let's just talk about the next steps for the solar project and if we want to begin exploring any other activities um, that we have. But yeah, a quick report out. You guys all know that the, the, um, uh, the board, the, the uh, town council, rather, um, you know, mo moved to carry. C A R R Y, I believe, for the motion carried. Um, that there's a proposal um, for the, that's good. That's moving on. Um, uh, it seemed to be it was the very uh, it was like the eleventh hour of a of a long day of uh, or after evening of of meetings. I don't know if you guys were all there, but uh, Sam and and Richard and I were there. Um, and John Bolt, I think too. I think he also kind of stuck it out. Um, but um, it, yeah, it was good. There weren't too many uh, hard to questions. Uh, there was one gentleman who had emailed some some questions um, to the town council beforehand. 
and you know we, we address those um yeah and i think just you know it was really just kind of a, a not a formality but the town council had appreciated all the work that we had done leading up to that moment um so it didn't give us you know didn't give us much heartache at all um in terms of our specific recommendation um sam richard do you want to have any add anything about your your observations from that that meeting you guys both did a good job jumping in yeah um as far as oh you mean as far as the the council meeting so, yeah, yeah. Oh. No, it was long and drawn out, and I was falling asleep. And Richard did a great job picking everything up again because <laughs> I, I think I was on the next day thinking about what I was doing for the next day. But yeah, no, it was yeah. great. No, really, I mean, and and the questions really, the questions that came in from one gentleman really who never attended the meeting, so uh, kind of, uh, and he, he was he was asking things like, well, how do you you know plug all the all this. Um, all this energy into all these meters we have in town. Obviously, had no idea of what the concept was of the of the uh, of what we were doing. Other than that, it's fine. You know, six zero, they they yeah. uh, approved it. We're done, and we're on to the next step. Okay. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. No, it was good. I think, and we, and you know, uh, as you know, as you all know, we've been um, at least Sam and I have been having conversations with Matt Sturgis. Uh, once every couple of weeks or so, just keep things moving. And we touched base with him uh, on Tuesday, no, yes, yesterday. Um, and he had just gotten the phone with Encore, uh, I think for their first conversation, um, just to kind of get things moving. And everything seems to be move, going smoothly so far. Um, the town has a couple of lawyers. They know, have experience with PPA. There's, there's no, you know, uh, new in you know innovations in terms of the, the language so it's it's pretty boilerplate we'll see of course um so, so sam encore has has as 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 uh, um asked by matt encore has sent over their version of what a agreement should look like um i i would i would tell you from from a business point of view and not just from a legal point of view i like to look at that agreement and for instance, there's things that they don't, they probably have already overlooked. For instance, we have, we have potentially a, um, a windfall coming to us. Uh, if you remember right, Encore, one of the great things Encore did was, was even though it reduced a little bit, they put $200,000 into the kitty for interconnection agreement. Mm -hmm. And that should be in there as to the potential uh, payment back if the interconnection costs are lower and I guarantee you they're going to be lower. So there's things that, that the lawyers don't understand that Matt doesn't know. And I would love to look at that contract. I do these things every week anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think I would, I would kind of insist that we see a copy of that contract. And if we need to put our red lines in, I think it's fair. Okay. Yeah. I had a, I had a general question about what this committee involvement is as we go forward with this contract. And you know what 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 are our responsibilities and what are what should our inputs be in general? Um, and then the other question. Yeah, I, I was wondering was, the same thing. You know, and then uh, the another question I had was, you know, should we be looking at as the next project? Should we be looking at, at topping things off with uh, a remote site, which you know we got information from both yeah. Encore and Amarasco um, um, about yep. potential. We've got sites, Greenfield sites that are active. And yep. Both of them have offered um, if we want to participate or not. So that's one question. And then the third question I had is, uh, what are what are other energy projects not associated with the solar project that we should be looking at? So those those are my three questions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I help with that one there, Sam, as well? Jump in. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So um, Matt has kind of jumped the, the gun on this thing a little bit. He talked to encore about their brunswick project and i said to matt i said okay great encore has offered another uh, remote project but there's a couple of things we have to, to address first of all um who's going to be the first one to build the projects so that we get the maximum savings off our top off as you would say richard um the second thing is uh, and, and that that goes to the fact that we should maybe look at encore and others again for that information and for a potential other bid. Also, um, 
concerning um, not just the top off, but the question is why should we wait to build this farm to get even the first um, part of our um, consumption as well, all our consumption until we do build a farm. So um, I had talked to Encore about this a long time ago, just, to, just in, in passing, and they thought that was something they didn't want to do but there's also, there's also potential that some will do that. And even in terms of uh, remediating that, if nobody else is gonna do it, all these companies have a termination clause in their agreement. So for instance, um, that I wanna mention the group I work with, but they, they particularly, you can get out of a contract in a year's notice. So that kind of rectifies some of that if we're, if we're going to look at even starting from point zero with a solar farm with, with our first consumption, all, all of our consumption. Um, so all that's gonna be considered, I think, in our next step uh, to, to maximize the savings for the city, the town. Number one, topping off what we don't use for our solar farm. And number two is supplying all the savings and energy until we do build the solar farm. And I think that, that that's, a, that's a, a nice undertaking for us. And I think we can easily write up a um, modified RFP since we got all the information and we can decide whether we want to work with all the eight bidders we have or just another general thing, uh, general um, RFP. That's something I'll open up for discussion, okay? Um, the other thing I want to mention, Richard, is bef not before, everything can, can be mutually exclusive, okay? Other energy is, is fine, but I think we're also um, charged with, with outreach to the community, okay? And I know, um, in, in my research, I know of four marketing groups who are marketing to the individual residents with different percentages of savings. And perhaps we should open that forum for a meeting with some of those people to make a presentation to us so that we can open that in some way to our residents as well. End of my talk. <laughs> is, is that option an, an end to what we're doing or an either? Absolutely, absolutely. Because we have an outreach mission as well. Uh, we have- What do you mean? Is there any reason why we can't go to top off and, and, and address that? And then a separate project outreach to, to the, uh, the uh, community or are they would those be combined no they, I would I would separate them uh, there is a there is a um, there's a syn synergy there um, Richard that that may come into play but it hasn't yet um, there we're not we've been dealing strictly with net energy billing at this point but there's a couple auctions out there and one of the auctions is a make subscription options the only one that allows for residents and uh, other classes, commercial, to be be run in the same or separately, but it does allow residents to run it run run its play as well as subscription holders, and that's the the larger 250 um, megawatt um, auction. So, without confusing the thing too much, which I can easily do, um, we certainly can, can can make it easy for the community. Our, our I think our our charge is to make the community aware of what's going on for them the best way we can and allow them to make their own decisions, but also supply a forum for them to do that. Maybe it's uh, a Zoom meeting at the library or, or whatever. Um, but I think we ought to think about getting that out to the public as well uh, beyond what we're doing now. What I'm, what I'm thinking of is that if you look at the timeline, you know, right now, we know definitively how much more energy the town needs, and that can go out, you know, to fulfill the, the town needs. If we go out to the community, the quantity of energy that we're going to ask for is not defined, and it probably won't be defined for months. So on one standpoint, you know, we could go out almost immediately and say we want, we want to purchase X number more kilowatt hours, whereas if we, if we, have a, if we combine that with, with actions from the town, we're not going to know that for months. And given the fact that the that the rates are going to change at the end of this year, you know we may be reducing the amount of savings that the town can ultimately achieve. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think we can get really complicated about this, 
but I think I think one of the things that was was really kind of drilled into my head by the community development director in Rockland when I was talking to her, she says, you want to create as little liability for yourself as possible. She says you need to take what you need to do with the residents is to is it is allow them to choose pick and choose whoever they want, but to make them aware of the programs that are there available. Because basically these residential um, uh, subscribe subscription marketing groups knock on doors and they take every individual meter, every individual uh, consumption, and then they do their own proposals to them. I think that's fine. I think that's good. I think that's all we need to do. I don't think we have to take and bring in, try to figure out what their consumption is and bring it into our fold. I think that would be too complicated and may create a, some liability that we don't need to have. Yeah, I, th I think we're tasked with getting the town to be green, not all the residents, except for the education piece. I don't think we should, you know, bring the residents into our programs directly. So just right, but we, but we do have a community outreach uh, portion, so we should make them aware of what's going right. on, exactly. and they can actually make their own decisions. Yeah, yeah. Right. But that's something we can work too, because that's going to take a little work on our part as well. We can be the conduit of that, and I think that's really important and it would be really great for us. Yeah, I think the conversation with the community around how they can use solar power, green power, like that would speak of a, a natural. Uh, you know, conversation that will be had, you know, when we, you know, present the solar project that we're having. You know, so I think we can kind of frame it as like a, you know, a Cape Elizabeth, you know, energy fair or something, you know, where we talk about a solar project and how great that is and how the town is. We will not be using green power. <laughs> um, yeah, as, as, you know, by virtue of the fact that we're not keeping the recs, that should be made clear. Um, but, uh, but then also, you know, these are ways that you as individual citizens of, of Cape Liz, but, you know, can, you know, can actually use green power and we can maybe can provide resources and have somebody come and talk about it. Um, so getting back to my question, is there any reason why we can't approach the, uh, companies and start looking at their greenfield projects to top off our, our the town needs. And also the- uh, You're muted. What's that? I thought it's I did. Muted. Let's yeah. do that again. Let's do that once more, Richard. I'm sorry if I didn't, I wasn't clear. Yes, we should. We should, We as I said, Matt Sturgis has already talked to Encore about doing it for their Brunswick project, okay? Is that the same as the Brook project? Because in their in one of their offerings, they talk about a Brooks, uh, they offer be. a Brooks PPA rate of. It, it could be, but the point is that we we there are more people. And see, the point is that does Encore have the first project coming in? There are people out there, the Next Grid Encore, who are, are early on the game, and even I got to admit, Revision. Okay, and we should. The question is, are we going to go with one group that we that one that's already won the bid, or are we going to open it up again? for other people? And are we gonna open it up for all of our, our consumption before we even start, uh, before we even have our solar farm in the first place? Okay, and that's what I think is on the table. I hope that answers. I think, I think, we, could, I think we could find out the, you know, we could find out the rates of all these different projects. Well, they can they can bid on it. There's bids going on for the solar farms too, Carrie. It's not like we have to we have to say which. Yeah, we can. You're right. We can we can go out and say what's your rate exactly? How much you want? When are you going to build your project? When can we start our savings? Right. Yep. And and what does that trend? Yeah, no, we could just. Yeah. Yeah, we could reach out to all the bidders and say, you know, we we found a project of a developer for our landfill, but we're also interested in other projects. What do you have? I don't know if we have to do another RFP. Well, we can but, certainly, it is isn't be a- But I we mean, could. It, it should be an RFP, but not as obviously, all these people have given a lot of the, a lot of the RFP, or maybe just a, a page, okay, of what we want and a page or two and let them come in with, with some bidding, with some proposals, okay? I think that's fair. 
Would it need to be a formal RFP process? And do we, we can it's just it's limit it to the people who bid on before easily. It's up to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, you know, we're, yeah. You know, we're not dealing with we're not dealing with um, um, you know the land or anything like that. It's got to be a lot simpler. We're just trying to buy into something yeah. they're already constructing. So I think right. the whole process would be much more straightforward. I mean, it's their it land, is. it's not our land, it's, you know, so, you know, we're not guaranteed, you know, we're not in charge of the equipment, we're just buying electricity, you know? Right, which is what the town does anyway. I mean, Perry, that's kind of your, your bailiwick, right, is that you, you enter into, you know, electricity contracts with companies all the time, so this would be a version of that. Mm. Just ask them for a proposal. I think it's fair. Let's, let's write something up. Let's look at the drafts. And let's, and let's get it out there. And you're right, Richard, it doesn't take very much. People are doing bids all the time on this stuff based on their solar farm subscriptions, all right? So so it's 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 fair. We want to limit to eight people we have. I think that's fair because, the old, for instance, I, I know one thing. Let's say Amoresco you mentioned was one of them. But I know Amoresco didn't do an early solar farm. So we may have to wait longer for an Amoresco. So we one of the we have a few questions here. Number one is obviously the bid price. Number two is when could, when do you anticipate your project to be finished? Your first project that we will be um, subscribing to. And number three, given the fact that um, some of them have already been taken up. And number three is, I, I, I like to say, are you willing to um, work with us uh, on a total a consumption basis until we build our farm? And number four is, what is your termination um, uh, clauses? Because that will uh, you know, tend to uh, eliminate some of that concern as well. If you just have those four questions out there, you're going to get bids back. Mm -hmm. Do we have an estimate as to when our farm is hopefully going to be built? Uh, Barb, that is a really great question. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is the ultimate question. Um, yeah. I'll throw throw things out to you to make you feel very very uh, sad about the whole process. But <laughs> but I can tell you right now, the good news is nobody is on our substation, <laughs> and probably never will be. Okay. Right. Um, and they, but obviously the um, the process in, includes the interconnection uh, uh, interconnection study, which have been backed up a lot lately because of all the projects out there. Uh, and so we don't know if that's three six months down the road. Meanwhile, we, of course, we assume that they're going to do all the other studies. Um, now we have we'll probably be approaching the end of the year at least of course, and then we hit the winter time. Right. So if I, if I were to say at the very earliest, we would start to build a farm maybe in the second quarter of next year, that would be as about as optimistic as I could be at this point. Okay. And then interconnected when in you know, the third quarter or how long does it take to actually build well, it? Well, hopefully, yeah, that's the other problem I'm having. We had a, we, we had a, a what, just give you an example, one of my farms, my first one in, um, we were all set. Everything went great. The interconnection costs were very little. We had early on pro deal. Interconnection agreement was signed, and they told us, uh, "Well, we'll have the upgrades done by by um, by March of 2022." I said, "What? You see, this is they 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 are they're going to be behind too." So we had to hire a private uh, contractor who was approved by the utility in order to get it built earlier. So these are things you run into with this stuff. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that there's there's ample amount of of solar power, you know, in you know on the grid that we can contract we can contract for. Right you know, now there uh, is there is definitely okay. yeah there's definitely yeah yeah. Um, the question for Perry is: Do we have to back out or cancel if we do this? This um, is so what our existing contract for for electricity with um. Uh, what's the firm that that does this for us? Direct Energy or somebody? Um, yes. How's how would this work? No. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure actually. Um, we'd be coming close to the end of the contract as it is, so it's going to be it's going to be close at the finish of the project. Whether 
or even in a contract. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't have it on me. Yeah. But um, I, I know they were kind of running neck to neck and neck whether that contract was going to finish prior to the solar project being finished. Hey Perry, remind me of something here, okay? Because I keep, I keep um, uh, going through this with my customers. Um, direct energy is a third-party source that supplies power. CMP is the same thing, as well as the transmission side. It doesn't really necessarily affect that at all. Supposedly, we're paying the bill still to the third party and to CMP, and it has to be on the same bill now. It's the only difference, okay? It has to be what they call a, I use the word consolidated bill or a combined bill. But once you do that, um, we're still being charged for all the energy. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure of it now. This is, the, even if we build our own farm, we're just, we're just still getting credits for that farm. We're not, we're not directly taking something off the grid and reducing the amount of energy that, that would be billed to us by the third party subscriber. However, CMP would go and give us credits for that as well. So I don't think it affects them whether they have a contract or not. Carrie, help me out on this one. Would it, yeah, would it matter? What I'm not sure about is if it matters the value of, of um, the credit. Like, so if you have a, um, so if you're on the standard offer pr program, that's what we've been calculated, the value of the, of the credits off of. And if you have a different a retail supplier, then it might be that your your energy rate would be different. So then that would sort of change the value of the credits. It wouldn't wouldn't change I the think, value, but I'm not sure. But, but Carrie, aren't we dealing with uh, God? We're dealing with a PPA here. We're not dealing with any discounts. So we're going to pay the same thing to the solar farm provider. Um, every given year, and plus the escalator, right? Yeah, we, we yeah, that's what. Yes, yeah, so we pay the same thing to the solar farm provider, it, regardless yeah. of whether or not we have standard offer or some competitive right. supplier. But the thing I'm wondering is the the net metering credits we get are offsetting our um, our electric bill. They and the be. rates in that are set by, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. but the rates, the rates in that are set. You know, the T and D rate is from mm -hmm. CMP, but the the um, generation rate that is from um, whoever our retail supplier is, right? Right. So right. that's the only thing that would matter, I think. Right. It, it, right. But but they if would we still had some it. super amazing deal, yeah. Right. Right. But it would way. be the same. That doesn't change. <laughs> So and I was just wondering, Carrie's. I think okay. In this case, we're a solar farm sponsor and a solar farm subscriber, as opposed to just a solar farm subscriber, right? Because because no, they're the sponsor. They own. That's right. So we're still a subscriber. We are going to pay that T. We're going to going to get credit for that that um, tariff rate under our particular classification, whatever the year is, whatever they put into that rate. Okay. And the the um, and if I'm correct here, the direct energy or the third party supply, whether you get another three year contract or not, is still going to charge you whatever they're going to charge you for supply, and the and the T and D rate is going to be still charged the same way by the or delivery rates the same way by the CMP. The only difference is direct energy has to put all in one contract. I Go think ahead. the yeah. other thing is that. We, we shouldn't be paying a lot for electricity because we're going to be saving because of net metering. So I, now I forget how much we use, but say, say, just say just like a hundred kilowatt hours a month, which I know is like not even how much a house uses, but say, let's say a thousand kilowatt hours a month. If we generate 500, mm -hmm. we're not going to pay for that. But our rate that we pay for the 500 we need Mm. is based on the contract with direct energy and for the for the energy and the CMP T and D rate. 
That right. is correct. That's correct. So, so all I'm saying, Carrie, here is, and I think what, what what Perry's trying to figure out is we don't we are their contract with Direct Energy, whether it's a three year deal now and another three year deal later, really isn't affected. Direct Energy is going to charge us the same rate and the same amount for the energy we use. We're going to get the credit off that bill, um, at you know, at each month, uh, but it doesn't change their position. But, but like the way my net metering works at my house, the way it works at my house is that I just get, so right now in yep. the summer, uh, we generate more electricity than we use. So our yep. bill is $12 or, or whatever the yep. fixed right. charge is. Yep. And then we get kilowatt hour credits. And then- Right, right, right. right. Winter, so supposed to monetize. Yeah, so, I get so, it. So, so what we, what we pay direct energy will be very different than what oh, we're paying no, no now question. because no we're question. going to be getting all these credits. Yeah. No, you're absolutely yeah. right. You're absolutely right. What we pay direct energy. The question I have is, um, yeah, okay, so that's correct. But direct energy's contract usually is not about is not about um, is usually about uh, uh, not consumption, but it's about the the rate that they'll charge us on a contract basis, whatever we consume. Um, so here's my, my question here, Carrie, based on what you say, um, is direct energy, um, this is a good question. I don't know the answer for interesting. It's one thing I don't know about that's puzzles me, but, but does direct energy actually get paid the full amount? Um, no, they don't. Or, or and they go after credits from CMP at that point. Um, because it, the tariff rates I don't know are, what happens to direct energy, but we're gonna find out. We need to find that my out. My guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. My guess is they're just gonna get less revenue, but well, that yeah. would be something we should figure out. Um, I think we ought to ask that question. This is a good question. I, I you know, yeah, yeah, great question. Okay, but I, but again, I don't think Perry, it, unless the direct energy decides that we're not using enough energy anymore, changes their contract. I think the contract is based on a, a per kilowatt hour rate and whether they uh, 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 and and th so you're not violating the contract in any way so that the timing doesn't really matter in that respect would be my answer if that's what you're looking for Here, uh, here's the contract um, I'm not sure where you would find that in the contract There we go. And by the way, all the literature says that it doesn't affect any third party billing if it's consolidated, that everybody's in the same position. So that that's that's a I think that's pretty much the um, disclosure law that MPUC put in. Just let me know if you want to turn the page. Go ahead. Uh, Byron's use of obligations. I don't think it says anything about. And are we are we committed to purchasing a certain a certain amount? That's what we're looking for there. That's what we're yeah. looking for. I don't think so. They may have based their rate on that, but they may, I don't know if they can hold you to that. The, um, let me go back here. Yeah, go material back. Usage devi material usage deviation. You know, this is what I was looking at here as far as December 2000, yeah, it looks like 22 is the end of contract. 20 contract quantity. Okay, so you have a usage quantity. Again, I think the issue is, I think MPUC has basically negated any of these contracts per se, but you know something? You have, ask, ask Charles, what does he think about that? Okay, Charlie Agner about that, what he thinks, okay? He would know real fast, okay? And 
Uh, what, what exactly do you want me to ask him? Well, ask him, tell him we're building a solar farm. Yeah, he knows and, that. And whenever it's been built, we're obviously going to use a lot less energy from you, whether we have a contract with you now or uh, we re-up a contract with you later. You're also going to have to consolidate the bill. That's just, a, that's just part of the procedure with a CMP bill, which doesn't change your, 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 your a contract. Does that affect in the contract that we presently have or any future contract in any way? How's that? Okay. Does that affect the contract? Okay. Good yeah, and then once we know that, we'll be able to make decisions. What we're, what, what, how much flexibility we have. Um, and hopefully, hopefully we have flexibility to, to, you know, to bid out, you know, some, you know, some more solar power. Oh, oh yes. Thanks, Sam. Also, second question, if we buy energy from a solar farm now, how does, does that affect the contract at all? Hey, John. Hello. Sorry, I was late. But you wouldn't let me in for like a few minutes. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, John. <laughs> That's really good questions. Yeah. Okay. See, all the literature says they can't do anything about it, but that's let's figure this out. So, who who are we asking about this contract? Direct Energy. Okay. Or our our broker, at um. Yeah, third party provider. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's the broker. You're right. He's the broker. So th there's kind of two questions when you're looking at a contract, um, getting out of it. One of which is. Does can, it, it, can you break it? And if, if you do, what does it actually cost you if you do? Because recourse, depending on the situation, also might be limited. So it's, it's, it's there's usually kind of two legal questions around that. It's like, you know, can I do it? And, and if I do, what's really the cost? Because some things may not, that may appear to be enforceable, might not be. So you just, you really want to know where you stand. It, it, so that's a, a, a lot of that's you know th that's particularly common in, in landlord tenant stuff where landlords put all kinds of stuff in there that's completely unenforceable and they go look at the contract and they go oh, I can't do that it's like uh, <laughs> yes you can <laughs> but even in other contracts I've seen it where you go oh okay well my, yeah, we my, can do what we can do my exposure is yeah. limited yeah. Perry thanks for bringing that up that's a that's a really good point. Good. Well, let us know um, what you hear back, Perry, and then we can we can yeah. you know move on that. Um, so okay, so we can we can we can we can table that for now. Then, uh, how do we or okay, what steps do we do we want to take in order to kind of introduce uh, kind of, you know providers, you know solar providers, you know into um, into town, knock on the doors of our of our residents, do we? A, do we? Is there is there is there a choice that we have in the matter? I mean, because they can knock on the doors anyway, right? But we want to. Oh, yeah, them. we have no choice about it. We just right. want to have a conduit. So we would mind. I would mind having them come to one of our virtual meetings or whatever meetings to present what they do. Mm -hmm. I like to know. There's three. There's several marketing groups out there vying for for position here, and. Uh, I'd like to hear about what they do because they're based on a completely as Carrie did with her with her um, bills it's based on kilowatt hours only it's still that energy billing but it's based on kilowatt hours only and um, they actually they all advertise a fixed amount discount off the bill itself which I don't know how they do it it's been commonly 10% one guy's giving 15% mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I like that. I think for all of us, we should at least, um, you know, invite one or two of these people to a meeting just to hear what they have to say, how they do these things. Okay. John's about to talk. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was. I was thinking. That so as, as we think about bidding out our additional electrical capacity and and possibly opening it up to the town you, you may be 
get the best deal if you basically package it as one deal. So the town is going to bid out this much capacity and we're going to allow for um, aggregate sign on of residents. Um, so you, so your total package of kilowatt hours that you're, you're bidding out is actually um, even larger. Um, it would depend on uh, the appetite of the provider to have that kind of structure. But if I were a provider, I'd be, rather than going and knocking on the doors myself, I'd much rather have the town aggregate and I'd still take the, uh, the end user risk but, and, and offer a deal for the, for the package. I want to get my numbers as big as possible. John, the, the, uh, the, the issues with that are a couple of things. First of all, how do you bring in everybody under one banner and that, that becomes an organizational thing and secondly is I was, and I, I mentioned this earlier before you came in, one of the uh, communities develop, um, uh, head of community development for another town said, um, to take on the liability at all of, of being responsible for, for bringing in other people, individuals, can, can create a liability you don't want to deal with. Um, better to be just a conduit for other people. I, 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 I understand. I, I think you could structure it such such that um, once you had interest, that they're contracting directly with that group of residents, but you're getting a package, but you're able to get a package price because you essentially facilitated. Everyone wins. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I think you could. Well, you is it, you got okay. Let's just logistics wise. I, I mean, look, maybe that will work. But the, the logistics may be more than we want to handle. I don't know. Could be. Yep. You know, I mean, that, that's a that's a that's a whole different level. And it, it, you know, we could do it through people signing up at what at the city hall or at the libraries, and then somebody the, then it, in the, each individual person has to obviously send their bills in, right? Or they have to get, get permission. Well, so yeah, it's. You know, again, I'm not against it. I just think it's. It, I don't want to, if I want to take the responsibility to do it. You know, it's mostly applicable if you're talking to providers that would want to aggregate individual customers anyway. Right, you're right, and that's another thing you just so mentioned. They, Most they have the structure are. already in place, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of them don't. Do we have? They want to deal with a high. And people only they don't even want to deal with residents because they don't want to deal with the HELOC rates. But you're right; there are there are those marketing groups. See, they're mostly marketing groups who accumulate different developers. So you're talking to the market groups, which you're talking about. Could be, yeah, yeah. The there question, are three the question, out there right now. The question I raised, John, is is um, timing. I mean, right now we know quantified. We quantified yeah. how much the town needs, but then in order to wrap in some amorphous amount that the that the, that the res residents of the town would need would take some time some months to define yep and so i i, I think you're right that, I, I i think uh, think about it as a third phase as uh as a uh, we've got our initial solar project we're going to bid out our other solar project if there's further solar interest we can basically say we're going to facilitate bringing in folks and to this you know with the appropriate level of disclaimer as well as you do want to do some checking you don't want to you know, you don't want the timeshare <laughs> style guys. <laughs> um, but but there, 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 there will be a um, likelihood that there people want to aggregate um, residential customers. I mean, then it, it's back way back to the original solar city model when they're doing residential solar. You, you got to go in and aggregate people so it's worth doing. Um, when they were doing rooftop solar. Similarly, if you if you're, you know, building uh, Greenfield Solar in Maine, you'd rather aggregate as you know customers for your project, and you, you, you know, big towns are as good as customers any, and they are paying residential rates. We might be able to leverage a little bit by saying, you know, by when we negotiate the town for the for the amount for the top off or our portion, and we can tell these guys that hey, you know, we're going to be advertising that, that you're the supplier for for mm -hmm. the rest of our town. And that might give you a leg up when you start marketing yep. to the rest of the residents in town. That's where it kind of breaks down. Are you, what, what makes us tell them they're, they're, that this person is a supplier? Because there are several of them around. I can tell you four or five already. 
will no, no, be not doors. And, and that's what I'm worried about, to tell you the well, truth, not, Richard. I, we're not going to tell them that, you know, that, that they're the, once we've settled our mm. top off suppliers, yeah. you know, then, you know, then we can say, well, you guys, you know, we, the town will then know who, we're, who the town is buying their energy from. Right. So while we're negotiating the top off, we say we can tell them that, hey, that will probably give you a leg up in the eyes of the town residents if they know that you are supplying this portion of, of our electricity because the town has, yeah. you have credibility for the town. And so that would give them, the, the residents, some sort of assurance that, hey, if the town is, is using them, it must be a credible supplier. Mm. So on that basis, they might go back and say, well, they might give us a little bit better rate, knowing that that is going to help them as they try and uh, assemble residents' community. Residents. Yeah. My hunch is it's best to roll this into a third phase and possibly with. Uh, oh, I agree. Put it. Put it. Put it. But the, what what you might link it up to is is doing things like electric charging stations, because there's going to be some publicity and things around that as well. Um, and that's a, has a lot of resident impact. So if you're putting in solar charging stations, you, you know, it's, it's not that dissimilar from when you run, uh, you know, compost and other sorts of waste vendors to come in and say, here's, you know, you sort of have a little bit of a sponsored fair and presentation. Um, to, um, not to but, change the subject, subject a little bit, Perry, I'm going to talk to MPUC about that contract thing about the direct energy thing. Do I think they have a ruling on that as well? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, look, look, let's, the, I think the good news here is we can discuss this a little bit more. Of course, the good news is we have a lot of things we can keep doing. <laughs> this is, this is kind of fun. It kind of snowballs. And Richard, I haven't forgotten about your comment about other energy efficiency either. Okay. Uh, this just seems to have a, a, a life of its own itself, right? Um, there is the a, town, yeah, yeah, the town. I understand yeah. the town is already working on some other things. Yeah, they are. And, and I know one of the vendors, Perry, I think you, you, we, we both know him, is putting light bulbs, uh, LED lights in one of the, in the high school also already as we speak. Correct. Right. So, Correct. I mean, that's another step, but it's not. Uh, look how low hanging fruit, but yeah, we got to get to that energy efficiency side at some point. This has just been too much fun so far, you know. We're getting what this project and that project done, right? <laughs> so the, so do we want to talk about it, do it, um, an ESCO sooner rather than later if they're already doing the lights, that sort of decreases the benefits of doing an ESCO, yeah, because then it, you don't save as much money. You've already right, you, you're piecemealing it, aren't you? Is what you're doing. You're right. piecemealing it. Yeah, it's a band aid. Um, yeah. I, 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 well, we talked about getting involved in the school redesign, but then I'm assuming that's been on hold while we figure out if people are going to school or I, <laughs> I don't know what Perry, you alluded to earlier that that had been on hold, but is that is that right? That is correct, but it will be starting up. I mean, the the, uh, the school board definitely expressed interest in starting that back up again and getting talks going. The, the, the thing I would offer from the big picture, both around the schools and the energy in general, um, I think if you look forward over the next couple of years, town budgets in general are going to be relatively tight because of what's happened with the economy and collections and a lot of different, and the uh, uh, pandemic. However, interest rates are historically low. Mm -hmm. If you have projects that essentially have cost up front and are cash flow positive paying back over time, you want to do as much of that as you possibly can, as soon as you possibly can, because you can bond it out and turn those savings into in you know into bond payments rather than operating costs. And, and because the benefits long run are cash flow positive, it will help your budgets. And we also have really great energy efficiency incentives right now too. So yeah. So I would say you know you so want to think as big as possible for things that will like pencil. It, the, it seems like the schools um, energy efficiency things, things like the 
type of heating system or cooling system or any of that, it seems like that's an opportunity for that kind of thing, for Did those kinds of savings. Carrie, does somebody want to tackle that as, I mean, can we split things up a little bit here? Um, because, I mean, Richard, you've got that engineering background. You're, you've been dabbling in this field for a while. Um, and and if, you want to, if you want to look into it, um, why don't you? Because we, you know, the other stuff is, it's not, it's not, um, I mean, it, it's, we've kind of gone but through But is that something we were, we were, we were planning planning to do that and we were waiting for the right point to get involved in the school process I thought I thought that was our plan and it hadn't come yet but I do agree we should have someone who's right on that um, so, so Perry do you, do you think there's a consensus now about what they want to do with the building because right now they were talked about sort of redoing the buildings but really there's sort of a question of how much do you want to do because some of them are really really old and some of the things that they've put off for a long time, like ventilation are really showing up in a big way right now. And so um, I'm not sure if they, if, you know, and there's going to be a trade off between budget and how much you want to get done. Cause we've got some of the oldest school buildings in the, in Southern Maine right now. Um, and rather than patch what we've got, which is sort of was the original plan, the, um, there may be an appetite to do something more substantial. Um, so until that sorts itself out, it's hard to play on the energy side. Is yeah, that you, you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> I mean, every, everybody should be able to tell John was a former school board member. So he, <laughs> he, he knows how it gets done. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so we'll just have to keep, you know, keep our, our eyes and ears open. Well, I, I, I think it's worth, Having a little bit of a discussion of that still needs to be the plan, right? Yeah, I do think it's worth having a discussion of if you are building a whole new building, here's how we can play in that. If you're not building a whole new building, here's how we can play with that. Even if it's just the back of the envelope level, because there's there's two clear paths. I think it's just a question of timing and appetite. But it's they're not going to just sit there and do nothing. That seems clear. Correct. Mm -hmm. What about other town buildings if they're not ready to move on the schools? Um, are there other town buildings that have easy, neat, or serious needs that could be good for energy pro um, energy efficiency projects? Yeah, uh, you name it. I mean, uh, basically the uh, town buildings have pretty much been untouched as far as energy wise. Um, it could be anything, LED lighting, uh, new heating systems. Uh, they need it all. So do that, wanna, yeah. Do we want to bring a company in to do an ESCO um, analysis, like a the investment grade audit or whatever? Amoresco does those. Um. Well, does the town have a long term plan where they prioritize uh, some capital projects? <laughs> yes <laughs> and no. <laughs> yeah. The town manager has a list of what's coming up in expenses, um, but I would say a plan, no. Not that I've seen. Even even just broken down from the standpoint of priorities? No. It's just a timeline or just a list? Just a list. Like, like I, I have submitted things for repairs or replacement uh, based on you know, I think it was five years out and and all subject to change because at any given time, something could uh, retire early. But um, that that's the extent of what I've seen so far. As so, far as building upgrades or anything like that, no. So uh, it's briefly, go, going back a few years, there was a review of all the town assets and infrastructures several years ago. Um, but it was never kept up to date. Mm -hmm. So right now, the town's ability to understand what assets it has and what condition they're in um, is limited. And as a result, it's very difficult to make a long run capital plan. Um, so could we bring in a company to do an investment grade audit to f figure out what needs to be done and what would save money and how to get that done is it free 
<laughs> no, um, it's actually, I don't think it's free, but it's not that expensive, I don't think. Okay. I, don't, I don't know. It, it could be <laughs> free if you, if you gave them the business. Yeah. <laughs> they call that a breakout audit. Yeah, yeah, I, think, yeah. yeah I think if you if you do it and you end up going with that company, it gets put into the contract. But so, Perry, if if we if you did that for all of Fort Williams Town Hall and the auxiliary other buildings that are not the direct school buildings, so that would yes. be a substantial package. Yes. And there's a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Did I and miss any big the building? Oh, they um. Probably you could also do the the um, facilities buildings because not not the main school buildings. I think that's an, that's another kettle of fish. But any of the service buildings in the school system. Yeah. You you know you if you wanted to do this, the only the my limited experience here, I've been involved in in, in bringing in like an an Amoresco and and, and run them against a, a constellation and a couple others and ask for a an a overall proposal. And what they'll do is not a, a full Austria audit, but they'll do kind of a, a, a 30,000 foot view and give a, a, a particular proposal. Yeah. And then at that point, you could select who, who you want to, yeah. to move forward with. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, so you can yeah, have them. I think how Newtown did it is they picked a few buildings for the initial, um, Propose like the initial estimate, and then they the in investment grade audit was done on all the buildings after they picked the one um, Amaros. Yeah. yeah, would that require an RFP to put that um, out? I yeah, think so, to, yeah may, maybe an RFP. Really? The th thing is, the problem with an RFP is we don't know. They'd have to do site visits and and because we can't determine like with the solar farm we know where it's going and all this other stuff. This is, but yeah, we can certainly we can at least get four or five high level, um, really branded people out there, branded companies, maybe maybe less than that, and let them give us a proposal by looking through the buildings. I think that's fair. Yeah, getting us started somewhere. All the buildings out. At first, I think you pick a few that are representative, and then. But yeah, yeah, it's good to get started. Be yeah. interesting. We could ask um, Tom to. He might know more about this than we do, <laughs> how it all works, since he's on the board of Amoresco. So we could ask him, what the process would be. Well, don't forget we had Amoresco came and spoke right. to us about this. Uh, no, no, if Amoresco is involved, Tom goes back into jail, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he might. I'm like, oh, Amoresco again. He hasn't, oh, come out, he hasn't even come to the first meeting yet again. <laughs> we, we, he can, he'll never be on the committee again. <laughs> well, if they do it for free, then. Uh, he may just want to promote and recuse himself. He's all over the place. Hmm. Poor Tom. Yeah, no, I think I think the ESCO idea and the efficiency, you know, for these buildings, I think is, is a great idea. I think we should definitely, yeah, kind of think through how to explore that. Um, yeah, especially if interest rates are low and we want to get started on projects. What mm -hmm. Newtown um, did was we did the the investment grade audit. I think it was sixty five thousand dollars or something like that for all the buildings, which was a lot of buildings um and then the proposal by amoresco was too costly so we just started they just there was a um funding mechanism through the state of connecticut at, at that point so they just started doing the projects themselves and contracting with different companies to do hmm. three buildings at a time so we didn't actually go with the esco company but we that's how we got started it was interesting I wonder if the ESCO audits are, I never checked the efficiency of Maine because I'm not really that tuned into some of the things they do, but I wonder if the audit itself is to be part of the incentive program. I don't know, maybe. I don't know how that works with municipalities. Yeah. Yeah, I don't either. I know the municipalities get a yeah, bigger share of that audit, probably that deal. I think um, on that lighting deal, didn't they get a pretty big chunk of Perry? On that lighting deal, like forty percent, bigger than most of the commercial guys. Yes. I know 
I, I shouldn't be on this conversation. I know too much about that one. Um, so <laughs> anyway, no, I, I, I think everybody's talking the same way. We need to get started with something. All we're doing is kind of going around in circles and figuring this building is a disrepair, that building is not good. I think if we, if somebody would take charge and say, let's think about three or four brand companies, and they're all big brand companies that do this stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, you can take an Amoresco, a Siemens, a Constellation, and one other large one I haven't thought next year. They all do it, okay? And have them come in and then give us the best proposal from there. I think that would get us started. Yeah, and let's just have Perry tell us which buildings seem the best to have them look at and then give them a list of a few buildings and then then we'll be comparing you know they can all look at the same buildings and they can we can compare what they propose so the uh, the one one other thing that's out there that i think we ought to consider sometime soon is um setting out um sort of a goal and reporting process for the committee because i think we're actually doing really interesting stuff and we have an idea so it, it, you we can draft the goal and and reporting pieces with what we want to do in mind but i think it's really helpful to set it out there so that people can see this is what we are doing this is what's in the ballpark and this is the progress you've made against it and then that's able to continue on year after year a lot more easily if we put it to paper you know, legacy. <laughs> well, it, it's no, it's, I get it. Of course, you, of course. You, yeah. You're trying to build an institutional knowledge. Yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah, it's great. It's true. You're absolutely right, John. So, no about it. Uh, John, I, I like I the I, I like this concept, but I'm not exactly sure what you're proposing we do. <laughs> Sorry. So, what I'm saying is the energy what, what, what? committee sets out um, annual goals and proposes a framework to report. At, you know, at least annually, perhaps more frequently, uh, to progress towards those goals. Again, this is so the kind of thing. That, like, how much? I'm sorry. What? Are you thinking energy saved, money saved, or like? We, um, just we're think point, like, well, we can decide that. My, my main point yeah, is really. Okay. It, it, my main point is part of this has to do a little bit with the policy piece that we do want to tackle at some point, which is, do we want to be green or do we want low cost or do we want or how much do we want to be right. green and those kind of policy decisions, they'll kind of sort themselves out a little bit as you go forward um, or how, how we want to uh, elaborate on that. But those sorts of uh, goals and policy and reporting types of things will guide us because we've getting the input up front as to where, what direction we can go, how much latitude you have to do. I, uh, if, if, if the remit of the committee is only pursue cash flow positive energy projects, it, it's a relatively narrow remit. It, um, and you can do that. If it's a wider than that, you want to kind of know a little bit how, how wider and what level of commitment. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might be something that comes out and say, we want to, aim to get Cape Elizabeth carbon net zero. However, the town will only fund the cash flow positive portion of that and we're gonna fundraise to do the externally to do the rest. Or I don't know what the answer is, but my, there's a number of po possible outcomes of what you set for the goal and how you try to achieve it and what you- Hey, John, uh, in doing that, however, and, and I don't, I don't wanna um, be uh, uh, derogatory, I, I want, we have to be on the same page with the town. In other words, yeah. we have a mission, we should make sure that we're not overreaching our mission and then maybe we will be in concert with that mission as we, as we move through our goals. You, you, you got it exactly. What I'm saying is take the mission and flesh it out to the next level of detail. And then you have a reporting framework that matches both the mission and how you fleshed it out. Okay. I don't think it changes anything we do. I just think it's putting some structure to what we have done and are planning on doing. And it makes it a lot easier for people to follow along and propose things that are worthwhile for us to do. That's, that's all. So, so the process I would suggest for this is people who are interested to do this sort of set up a, a, um, a, a workshop that, that 
to, to talk through what it might look like and throw a, a straw man up there to see what, we, you know, maybe this would work. And, and if we have something to propose, we'll pass it on to the, the town council. John, do I hear you volunteering to head up that? Committee? I think he is. I really do. He's good. That, that, yeah. That's fine with me. That's fine with me. I mean, I'm the one who's pushing for it the most. I don't have a problem with that. But I, um, John, I, I will help you with that if you want. Um, great. great. Okay, good. Well, while you're sending I agendas, that's that's so write that one down. So what are we going to do for next time now that we've talked about? This is great. This is great. We got a lot of things to do here. <laughs> I think it's great. No, I, we do. We have uh, 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 Barry is going to find out about the uh, third party deal. We're going to somebody's going to write up a, uh, uh, some sort of framework for a potential, not an RFP, but something for a bidding process for, for extra energy. Uh, we've got the, the somebody who needs to be looking into this uh, efficiency thing at the same time. We have a lot of things going on here. They do. Afford it. Yeah. Well, and we didn't even mention electrification of the fleet either, which is something that I've been thinking about. Um, and you saw that note that I sent, you know, which is pretty cool, the article from the, 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 the Herald. Um, can the monk got a... I, I, I think on that, Sam, I was just looking Tesla. on the efficiency <laughs> main website that. about the... Um, so... Uh, <laughs> saying, Carrie? Sorry. Mm -hmm. Carrie, didn't well, you Well, I was just looking on the efficiency main... Yeah, I was looking on the Efficiency Main website just to see what they offer for municipalities. And they do offer some rebates and stuff around heating and uh, cooling technologies and lighting, it looks like. Um, but as I recall, there was also potentially some incentives for um, charging stations. And remember, didn't someone come talk to us about that? Um, right. But and, and I was wondering if we should have someone just reach out to Efficiency Maine and say, look, we're the Cape Elizabeth Energy Committee. Yep. We want to save money. We want to save energy. <laughs> How can you help us? <laughs> right, yeah. Um, well, and I'm, I'm happy to do this. Yeah. Um, yeah, excellent. I, excellent. I actually think it, it's worth looking at yeah, I can do that. all aspects of the, the current state climate plan draft. I think there's things that may impact the the town from all almost all of those sectors, mm -hmm. um, and they're sort of not all of them are quite within our remit, but most of them are. Um, and they're how do we both uh, contribute and leverage what the state's doing? It's it's really interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. You haven't seen it. The, the draft's out for questions. I think now for sur survey. Mm. Can I send a link out to that put to us for that. Um, yeah, it's worth what, what I did is I, that there were presentations on each segment of the plan that are videos, which is how I digested most of it. They're each about 20 or 30 minutes long. It was worthwhile. And there, and there's PowerPoint presentations that go along with those. So I'll, I'll send a link out to that. Let me make a note. Do that. Yeah, I, will, I was, um, I was involved in the, uh, the energy part, the energy working group. So there's, um, there's, there was an energy working group, a transportation one, a buildings working group, which would all be very relevant to what we're doing. And then there was, and we kind of, um, we got sort of updates on what they were doing along the way. And then there's a, a, some other working groups, which I think actually could be very relevant to the town, but might be less relevant to our committee, yeah. like, you know, coastal, some sort yeah. of more adaptation kind of groups. Um, but I think looking at the transportation, the buildings, and the energy working group presentation could be useful. Um, I, I agree. I'll send those out. Yeah, I think that's a good point, though. Syncing, syncing up with what, this, what the, 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 the state government is doing and wants to offer and, you know, and what they're doing to try to help you know, make towns like ours you know, you know, use less energy and more sustainable. And there's a lot out well, there. Particularly in the era of Zoom meetings, I think it'd be really e probably easy to get someone from that uh, higher up in that plan to, to talk to us about how we might participate in what they're doing. Yeah, if we talk, if we talk with, um, I can talk to, I can reach out to Michael Stoddard. Um, he's the director of Efficiency Maine, and yeah. he was the also the um, the leader of the buildings working group. Um, uh, he, I, I think he he would be. He would be good for us to talk to. Um, 
I don't know if he has time. He's very busy, I'm sure, but. Um, yeah, or he could send somebody else that he knows. Um, right. yeah. Remote yeah. meetings are not so hard these days. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't tell that to yeah. Perry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not, not five hour yeah, one. Not Sam, not. <laughs> Perry had a five hour one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we've got, I think we've got some good marching orders. So um, just to kind of to wrap up a little bit. So Perry, you've got, you're going to kind of look, look into our power contracts and see what we're going to have yep. around that, which is great. Um, John, you and Carrie are going to get together and talk about some sort of. So uh, I think since there's just two of us, we, we can just, we, we can chat and then throw on an agenda item to, to put it out for discussion, put something out for discussion. Sure. I think that's, yeah. I can also help with that if you want another person to send that me. sounds great great and also, i could email tom and ask about the esco process like how do we, how we go about getting that going perfect perfect and i and i just want to make sure that he's you know if there's emails going around uh to include him i think that uh the most recent threads have does have his name on it um but you know there are different threads and some may not have his name on it but i want to make sure he he gets back into the into the loop until we have to kick him out again. <laughs> yes. Um. And um. Yeah. And then you froze, Sam. I guess for our next meeting, do we want to ask residential solar companies or from uh, Efficiency Maine to come talk about uh, kind of you know the how that organization can can help us? We have a, a preference in terms of who we should invite, if at all. I think efficiency may be a great starting spot because they've got a broad touch points on a lot of stuff we need. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I can ask. I can ask Michael. Um, do we know what our next meeting date is? That would make it easier to ask. <laughs> no, let's fix one. I think. Uh, I'm there, also, every, every maybe the next one is September. Let's see. I, I, I'm also going to suggest that if we get Michael Stoddard or somebody like that, that we write up an article for the Courier about what happened, so that we sort of get that word out. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, hey Sam, speaking of that, have you do you know when that article is coming out? The one you interviewed for? It's you funny. Know? The for, the forecaster, yeah, was it came out. It's already come and gone. I have I didn't even read it. Uh, That's really interesting. We should get a copy that of that, maybe. Yeah. It, it was pretty short. It had a little bit from Sam, a little bit from myself, and a little bit from Matt Sturgis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what they put priorities. We should have the full front page of the famous forecaster. I, <laughs> I think it was front page. It was even above the fold, if I remember correctly. I, think I, I, I oh, glanced around at it while I was at a donut shop. And I mean, never picked up a copy. I should have. I was but, but, out you know, I, I agree with with John. We should get as much publicity out as possible. This will also help our residential business as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, the school the school board has pretty much taken over the courier. I mean, not a third of the courier seems to be reports from the school board. <laughs> that, that 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 section of the paper may not die down for a bit yet. <laughs> But believe me, they'll be happy for something upbeat and different. <laughs> well, did, in terms of coordinating some sort of outreach, you know, around the solar, do we want to, there are milestones we want to hit before we, we, you know, present anything? Um, do we want to, you know, get a contact signed with, with Encore before we do that? Or um, I guess we should coordinate with Matt. Yeah, my, my, my guess is that we want to get to our, um, the town screen sort of promotional done first. Say that again, John. You, you broke up a little bit. I said I think we probably want to get the town's solar contracts and additional solar stuff underway first. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Yeah, again, again, if I can get it though, uh, Sam, if you can possibly do it, if if it isn't objectionable, I want to see a copy of the uh, encore contract to us. Really yeah, do. yeah, I completely agree, and I'm. Um, I'll make sure that, that that Matt knows if you want to put that over. 
Yeah. So what are you saying? Before we look at the top off, we get this, we get their landfill contract in place? Oh no, I think we should continue with that down that road. I don't okay, think that's gonna, anything. Yeah. Who's, who's gonna lead that effort to get the, the, the uh, top off PPA? I'll do that. <laughs> oh, somebody named Sam. Yeah, now, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, talk to, I'll talk to Matt about the average part of this. Um, and so just to answer your question, John, about our next meeting, um, next meeting is scheduled, at least on my calendar, on September 17th. I'm not sure if that is an official date, but I think I just put it every Thursday, every third Thursday of the, you know, of the month. Um, Perry, is that fixed in the calendar? Is that, is that a formal date as far as you know? They, they have it fixed in the calendar, but like this one, we were a week early on this one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I suggest going with the 17th. Only because I don't know how those first couple of weeks are going to be for me in September. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Oh yeah. I just, you know, if we decide to change it in any way, I just need a, a week's notice to to give them a heads up and publicly post it. That's all. So we can do a tentative yeah. for the seventeenth and go with that. Yeah, that sounds great. And then we that way, to John's point, we can you can we will have, we'll have a date that we can invite uh, some of the fish you see Maine to. Okay. Um, he, Carrie, were you gonna get in touch with Michael Stoddard or? Um, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, okay. I can do that. Great, perfect. Um, excellent. Are we? Did we forget to make a final note of anything we decided to do? So I'm gonna touch base. So with there was a, a lot of moving parts today, which is which is great. John, okay, yeah. I'm sending along the links to the climate plan. I'm touching base with Carrie and Barb about um, setting goals and reporting framework. Mm -hmm. Perfect, great. Um, good, yeah, and, and, we, and we'll um, uh, yeah, make some progress. We'll come reach out and identify some, um, some companies um, to have to, to do an investment grade. Audit. I mean, we're not going to make any promises at this point. I don't. I don't think. But um, not the idea is to do audit yet, but at least give us a, an idea of what we need to do. Offer some companies, you know, that can come in and tell us what they can do. Yep. Were there Were there any conclusions on whether or not we're going to pursue uh, other town efficiency stuff with the non-priority list that uh, that uh, Perry has? Hmm. Well, I think the, the um, if we can find a company, an ESCO company, to come in and let us know what you know how that might how that might look in terms of kind of you know a package deal, I think it might be the best way to do it. Um, that we will we'll have a good sense of what we will create. What so you just want to wait on that until after we get something from the ESCO? Create that priority list and kind of you know what to, what to hit first. Yeah, yeah, because they they will tell us what what efficiency upgrades will actually save us in money and that kind of thing and what how much it'll cost and mm -hmm. that kind of thing yeah and i'm hoping when we talk to efficiency maine we can find out if they offer any yeah. um, audit services i didn't see it on the website but mm -hmm. that would help us understand some of that prioritization yeah. i hope in the fleet in, in general efficiency maine has a referrals to con to consult to approve consultants who do that for them do yeah. that Okay. So we'll wait anything on the on the fleet electrification yeah. wait for that as well. Well, yeah. So that's another thing. I was hoping efficiency main. We we already heard about their incentives. They had some um, incentives for certain vehicles, and I think when we talked to them before, we were concerned that the types of vehicles they had available were not the types of vehicles that Cape Elizabeth would need, like. There wasn't someone who was driving around a compact car or whatever, but maybe maybe we weren't thinking far enough. Well, like as I recall, there for it was Sam's it was based on um, type of vehicle, based on the type of vehicle and also the value of the vehicle. They they limited how much they'd reimburse you based on what the vehicle cost. So, for instance, I'm not sure they'd pay for a Tesla. So. I've got that Thank presentation. You, yeah. Send that to people who like it. 
but they didn't they do that for in that article you sent out? Yeah. Him? yeah. So yeah, they did. If the, if the police are going to start, you know, change if they need new vehicles or whatever, they might consider a Tesla or whatever. So uh, we 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 ought to actually think about what a uh, entire town vehicle electrification plan could look like because the more that you can do the the better off you'll be honestly um for the most part town vehicles unlike private vehicles have a known duty cycle a known range that they go their their um uh, ability to simplify repairs and maintenance and things like that uh, all, all aggregate um so we really ought to think about this from the entire whatever the town fleet is and you know some you may be able to move sooner rather than later but long run you i think you want to electrify everything you can because the duty cycles and costs and total cost of ownership is lower mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's gonna be a really exciting project i think we probably need some perry spare bandwidth to, to help us identify which, which what, what parts of the fleet, you know, can we swap out? Um, so I'm not quite sure when Perry, when you might have <laughs> more space in your brain, <laughs> um, given everything else on your plate, but that'd be a good project. I'd love, I'd love to kind of work with you on that, to look at the fleet and kind of see, you know. Okay. I wouldn't be opposed to a company that. vehicle for myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Sometimes a lot of the resistance to doing fleet changeovers is people have gotten used to the vehicle that they're using rather than looking at what does the, how does the vehicle actually function. Mm -hmm. right. exactly. And you have guys driving around in trucks, they don't really need a truck. You might need a couple of smaller utility vehicles and one big vehicle. And, and so it's really going back and looking at what are the fleet needs and what, how can you electrify that fleet and how you phase it. Um, yeah. uh, so um, there was a lot of resistance for, you know, police not wanting to not drive giant cars, even in, in cities that have little tiny streets, which is, you know, it's crazy because that's not really what they need, but there's a, you know, resistance there. So, um, I don't think we have that same to the same degree here, but there's a there's a lot of opportunity because um, vehicles are a significant expense over time, both on, on the asset and and operation side. Mm -hmm. Sounds like we need a vehicle audit. Park that vehicle near that building; they'll do that too. Yeah. Well, I know <laughs> we've got the the list of uh, vehicles that we've got in our in our fleet. Um, you know, I was looking at it not too long ago. Um, so we, we have that, at least we have a, we have a database of all the cars that we have in vehicles. Yeah. Except we do and we don't, because you have the ones that are, uh, some of them are with building and grounds budgets, some of them are in the police department budget, some of them are in emergency services budget, some of them, they're not all aggregated. Believe me, they are not. You don't know what the whole town vehicle picture is by looking at one, one page of the town's re report. You don't. Sounds like, sounds like something the town council ought to look at. Yeah. <laughs> Asset accounting is a sore spot with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you'd be a good person to, to include in this exercise then, John, since you've definitely got some, some, some thoughts on it. I'm looking at this right now. It's, it's this, this, this sheet. <laughs> I might not recognize it at all. You might recognize it. But yeah, I remember. Uh, I think I still have it. Um, so maybe it's maybe it's complete, maybe it's not. But anyway, this is a place to start. That's actually there might be a little bit of change to it, but it um, they don't buy that. Yeah, maybe. it's probably missing a few things. Mm -hmm. yeah, it looks like maybe fifty vehicles or so, maybe 30, sixty. Yeah, decent decent number. Um, anyway, this is definitely something we can. That, that we'll, we'll, we'll contemplate. Um, so if you think about it from in terms of you know scale, if you're able to, to save on the total cost of ownership on 60 vehicles, that's a pretty big number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing that might enter into it, I'm just thinking, as I go across the country in past times when I could, it seemed like every police car was a, a Ford something, Escape. 
and somebody may have a national contract that might be uh, of a certain price that may affect how you, what you buy and what the cost is of that vehicle. Is that, how does that work? Because it just seems like everybody had the same vehicle. Is that, am I, am I crazy here? I, I think maybe on a state level, but I don't know about town. I, these companies put out packages for specifically for police and there's only a couple manufacturers that do that. So yeah, yeah, I think it just goes by popularity and looks and what they, what they get for their money. Generally there's one or two, there's a, a limited set of models that are modified mm -hmm. for um, law enforcement vehicles. There's like, you know, five, four or five different models. Mm -hmm. um, lately there's been a lot more SUVs and stuff than sedans, but you know, that's why for a long time it was the Crown Vic and a few others. <laughs> right. it, it's moved on from that to now mostly a couple of different SUVs. Um, but that, that's, be there's separate, there's separate divisions in within the larger automakers. Usually the requirement they throw on it has got to be American made too, which also. It, it, that, 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 that got complicated as, as everyone's supply chain. Uh, there's, there's more American content in your Toyota than your Ford. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the other thing we've always said, yeah, yeah. Perceptions well, are more important than facts these days. Well, hey, it's I drive a Dodge and it's built in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, where'd the parts come from? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In another continent. This <laughs> is they have free health insurance up there. That's why they get away cheaper. Uh, hey, we've been, um, you know, we've been expanding. You think about what we thought about tonight. I mean, it's expanded big time. I was just a poor little solar guy when we first started this thing. And now we're, we're into charging vehicles and building audits and and yes, we're, we're ready for the next phase, that's for sure. Well, I think you think you can all, you know, walk and chew gum at the same time and, and do do more than one of these things. Sometimes, especially if we, got, if we divide and conquer a little bit. Um, but I think all of these things we're talking about have real have real opportunity to save the town money. Um, I oh, think no you know, if no there question. is an appetite in the town to kind of to, to pursue things to save money, which I think they do, especially these days, as we're well seeing some tax revenues kind of, um, kind of Retract a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. If you go down the path of vehicle electrification, and we've already gone down the path of essentially getting green power, you've lessened the carbon footprint of the town dramatically. Okay. And um, all your power green, and you're turning all your vehicle green exactly. over time. Yeah, that's well, huge. As long as everybody is willing to do, you know, their little part there, I think it's great. I mean, I don't object to it. I think it's it's great. It just, we, we just, I, I just get, I'm just either impressed or astounded by the amount of breadth we have at a given meetings, you know, and where we start and where we finish. So, um, uh, I, I just continue to all these paths. You're right there. They're mutually exclusive in many ways. Okay. So, you know, there's no reason why you can't uh, have a couple doing this component, a couple doing the other component. I have no problem with that. Just don't want to cut up, you know. I just don't want to buy any more than we can chew either. And logistics can be an issue. But if you guys think you can handle all that stuff, it was great. Well, a lot of it's exploratory, so we'll see what is easy to do and what is going to take longer. And yep, and, okay. and you'll get, you know, we take a look. I agree. I think. Gary, you cut. You broke up, Gary. Yeah, I think I think we will need to to focus ourselves, but we can we can do this exploring, and then maybe the you know the goal setting thing that John's talking about, and then mm -hmm. figuring out sort of what what will help us prioritize. I don't think we'll be able to do all of these mm -hmm. things all at once, but oh, I get over it. time, I get John, you just finally got to me. We can say the, the we we do all these things. We get all these things started, and we say the next committee is going to do this, right? That's what we do. Yeah. I think the the, the low hanging fruit will become obvious after we've gone through some of this stuff. Yeah, I'm just kidding, but I mean it's great. I mean, look, it's great if we do if we have a lot of work ethic in this group, and we've we've come a long ways. People like us, and I think it's great. I, I don't get me wrong. It's just sometimes when I get done with a meeting, I, my head starts spinning because we've got so many things going on at the same time, you know? Mm -hmm. 
So, well, we're in a in in energy. I'll, we have some a lot work, of things for sure. to um, but they require upfront cost and, and payback over time. So, mm -hmm. okay. I make a motion. We adjourn. Uh, good, Barb. Second. <laughs> so moved. The meeting shall be adjourned. All right. Good Thanks, everybody. guys. Bye. Yeah, thanks. thanks, everybody. Bye. All right. Bye. Thanks for joining, everybody.